Hey fatty! In this video I'm going to talk about sodium and potassium intake because I've been getting a lot of questions about it with respect to my snake diet and my snake juice as people are calling it. But before participating in any snake diet activities please consult your local drug dealer to make sure that it's okay. And by drug dealer I mean your local doctor. Let's begin. So we have sodium and I recommend pink salt, pink Himalayan salt. That is because it has crazy amounts of minerals. It's better than most sea salts, okay? There's some pretty high grade sea salt but this stuff's better than most of that stuff. So Himalayan pink salt is going to be your main source of sodium. So one gram of this Himalayan pink salt has 420 milligrams of sodium. One teaspoon equals six grams, which is therefore 2,520 milligrams of sodium. Now, sodium intake is going to be different for everybody. Some people will need like basically nothing because they sit around all day and they're doing very little. Some people like a high level athlete or somebody that's sweating their bag off all day is going to need a lot more. It can vary right from very little up to 8,000 milligrams a day. Or even more, who knows? So you gotta feel that out. But, now I recommend, remember, talk to your doctor. For a lot of people, if you're not too hardcore in activity, you go with maybe a half of a teaspoon, which would be right around that 1250 milligram mark, or maybe one teaspoon, which is 2500 milligrams. You know, um, I usually take about one and a half teaspoons to two teaspoons because I'm fairly active. I sweat a lot. Okay? But potassium and sodium go hand in hand because the way your cell works, there's a potassium sodium pump. And if you lose all the potassium on the outside of this, or sorry, if you lose all the sodium on the outside of the cell, then the potassium will leave the cell and then you'll end up with cramping and all sorts of issues, weakness. Usually, if you're feeling like shit and weak, it's because you don't have enough fucking salt and potassium. Or you've lost all your salt and you're starting to lose all your potassium and you urinate all your potassium on once your salt's gone. So when I say salt, I mean sodium. Okay. So what I'm saying is sodium's going to be variable. You'll have to play with it. Now, as far as the fucking snake juice drink goes, you don't have to put the pink salt in the drink. As long as you get a fair amount when you eat your meal. So let's say you're even eating once every 48 hours. Just put maybe half of a teaspoon of pink salt within your meal. You know, you can have it on cucumbers, have it on some eggs, whatever. So you can get the pink salt in your meal. It doesn't have to be stretched throughout. But the reason you want it in your meal, because if you were going to not put it in your meal and you're going to drink it throughout the whole of the day, you need to drink it throughout the whole of the day. You can't just fucking take a half a teaspoon or a teaspoon or whatever of pink salt and knock it back in like two shots of water because you'll be shitting your fucking brains out for fucking two hours straight. That's the, and then you run into real problems because then you're shitting out all your electrolytes. So that's the salt. That's the sodium. Okay, remember that. You can put it in your food and then you don't need to put it in your water the whole next day or the next two days. Now the potassium. So I get that via no salt. There's a couple other things you can buy out there, but no salt's one. Another one's called salt free. And there's another one called now, if I'm not mistaken. And it's the same stuff as well, basically. Now, one teaspoon of this no salt is 2,560 milligrams of potassium. Okay? The recommended, they say, with the mainstream. Now, I've done a lot of experimentation and... I don't, I feel this 4,700 milligrams a day is a little high, but that's what the mainstream recommends. So that would be about two teaspoons per day. So most of you, if you went with about 1.5 teaspoons per day for about 3,800 milligrams, it'd be just about right. Okay? <clears throat> and you can tell because if you start feeling weak, headaches, a lot of it is, especially if you're fat adapted and you've been fasting for a while, if something changes, usually it's guaranteed you're gonna be low on this stuff. Almost guaranteed, okay? Now this stuff, you can mix up in your water throughout the day. 
with lemon juice, it takes the taste out of it a little bit. It doesn't make it so bad. But either way, you got to get this in throughout the whole of the day. And your water intake does not have to be fucking a set amount of water. You drink water when you need fucking water. And I'm going to get into dry fasting a little more because now I'm getting to the point where I don't drink water anymore. And if I was drinking water, I'd pack my water right into the end of the day. So I'd be drinking all my water at the end of the day. Because what happens when you drink water all fucking day, your body just lets go of it and you piss out electrolytes and you're trying to put them in. Okay, so the whole water thing is completely, like I'm, I'm completely changing all that. But for now, if you're drinking water throughout the day, if you went with about 1.5 teaspoons as a starting point, okay, of the no salt. I hope that makes sense. But just remember, you don't need, like, you don't have to have a set amount of water. Don't be like, oh, I gotta drink three liters of water, or I gotta drink two liters. You might only need about a liter or a liter and a half, and then you gotta make sure you get this no salt in with a liter and a liter or a liter and a half. So, and you can also put this on your food as well. Same as the pink salt. You can put this on your food as well, okay? To get your, to get your potassium in. Because here's the thing. You have to get this stuff in. Because if you're trying to cut weight quickly, you obviously aren't eating enough potassium to make it up. So you gotta get it somehow or you'll fucking die. So that's why you have to get this in if you're eating very, very small meals every 48 hours like a lot of people are. Okay, so that's why. So if anybody has any questions, you know you can message me. And, but that's the gist of that. So hopefully that's not confusing. So basically run through again. So the sodium, sodium take with your food. It makes it easy. Then you don't have to drink salt water. But if you don't mind drinking salt water, fine. Take it with your food. A good, a good starting point is going to be like half a teaspoon for a lot of people. Maybe one teaspoon on your food and your meal. Okay. Even if it was, even if you're eating once every two days, one teaspoon on your food on every sec, every meal you have once every 48 hours would be enough. Just a starting point. Okay, everyone's fucking different. If you're sweating your ball, and usually, obviously, most of you are trying to lose weight because you weren't active in the first place, so obviously you're not sweating very much because you weren't doing fuck all, that's how you got fat. So obviously you're gonna be eating one meal like every 48 hours, and therefore you probably only need about half a teaspoon because you know you're not sweating much anyway. And then the potassium, you want to take that in your water or else you want to dab it with your finger or lick it or whatever, but take it throughout the day in your water and a good starting point would be about one and a half teaspoons a day. Maybe, yeah, one and a half teaspoons and at most two teaspoons at most because that gives you 4,700, which is the recommended, which I think is high. That actually gives you about 5,000, right, if you went with two teaspoons. So that's all I have to say about that. Forrest Gump. So everyone have a great day. And if you have any questions, get a hold of me and get that fat in you.